both these young men have had a real good week of fights, and you know, one relies strictly on his quickness, the other relies on his, his height advantage. And as you can see, Warren is very quick, very quick in and out, and lands some good solid punches. Whitfield is much a taller guy. Both of them are really talented, though. They've very got great skills. Whitfield's got about six inches on him. Listed at five foot seven, but Warren, the hand speed, he just can't keep up. Oh, he's landing some shots. He's got a rock in here. Got a standing eight count for Whitfield. And Warren, I tell you what, the judges are liking all the combinations. He's piling up the points. Manuel Stewart has told all the coaches, you got to get these guys out here banging. And that's what we've seen all week long. Those guys throwing punches out here, not rat a tat tat. They're banging. Because that's how you get the judges' attention. Couple straight lefts from Warren, and the point total is rising for Warren. I'm looking at 12 3 at this point. I'll tell you what, though, Warren got caught with some right hands right now. This is really a competitive match here. Giving and taking here. Warren seems to be doing a good job, but he also has got uh, taken a few shots. Four two minute rounds here at the Olympic trials. Whitfield has got to get outside that lead right foot of Warren's that southpaw style is causing the lands of little hit with some real shots. These two guys are not the classic Olympic boxing styles we've seen in the past. In the past, we've seen a lot of guys out there rat a tat tat. We're seeing guys out there pitching and throwing hard right now. Yep. That's the uh, Emmanuel Stewart philosophy right. is that you need to go out there and bang because we get the Olympics. The other teams are out there banging. They're not doing that shoe shine. We'll be back with more from the U.S. Olympic Boxing Team Trial. They're right at that tat. They're letting their hands go and they're punching for power. But the interesting thing is, Scotty, that, you know, power or a soft one, a point's a point, right? A point's a point, but I'll tell you what, you get the judge's attention and the official's attention when you start landing good shots. You get your opponent's attention, too. Yeah, they surely do. You make them change their game plan. These guys are trading right now, pitching and catching. This is really a good fight, very even. This is it. I mean, championship bracket. Chance to go to Athens on the line. Earlier this week, we've seen some guys come out in the first round to steal each other out. We have not seen that tonight. No, this is all for all the marbles tonight. They're not going to leave anything in the gas tank. When that last bell rings, you want to be on empty. Mark Davis seems to come out a little bit stronger in the early part of this round. And uh, now Silas is doing better. Got to be a confidence building round for Mark Davis in the red corner. Siler in blue had his number last year. And after the first round, it is self explanatory. Red button, you got a blue button. Five judges, you just got to hope everyone has a good enough angle to see it. Exactly. And it, that's that the great thing is with five judges around the ring, you got, you're, you're hoping that three would see it. Pretty even first round, seven to six for Siler. But I got to think, Scotty, though, a confidence builder for Davis after what happened last time between the two. Yeah, he got he got thrown a shutout last time. So he's doing a lot better this round. And he came out fast that first round. Let's see if he can withstand that pressure he's trying to put on. And the thing is, you know these guys, their training has been peaked for this. They're in tip-top shape. There's not going to be too many guys getting out of gas come the fourth round. They're ready. No, they, you won't see that in this in this particular group. In the finals of this group, everybody's in shape. Everybody's ready to go. They're all warriors at this point. These guys are going toe-to-toe. -to -toe. I'm surprised they're a little bit about the, the tie-up right there. I was just surprised. Sorry for that. I stand back and Davis stepped in and tried to tie him up. He want to take a break or something. Solid left for Davis. Very solid left for Davis has got to let those hands go if he's going to try and stay in the, in the race. Siler came out early in this round, scoring a lot of points. Siler scoring some more points. Nice inside work there by Siler. Not real powerful, but scoring points. Getting the job done. 
and it's those body blows that really take something out of your opponent, but the judge, they're not going to count for those. And straight to the head of Davis, rocked him, and Siler is going to be very happy in his corner when they find out just how many points he's racking up here. That's right. And Davis is not going to be happy when he's going to lost his Oh, a good first round. And now Silas is throwing it on. Siler connected the head of Davis again, and that seemed to rock a bit. Both played real good left hook right there. What's the difference, Scott, between round one and two? What is, is it then uh, Siler making the adjustment or Davis? Siler, getting made, Siler making the adjustment. Davis getting a little tired and a little weary of getting hit. You know, when you start landing some shots, the guy starts thinking about defense might be a better part of the game. And there's the bell for round number two, and it is a solid one for Siler. 21 to 9 for him after two rounds. And with us right now is the winner in the 106 pound weight class from Cincinnati, Ohio. Rasheed Warren, 25 to 5. They stopped it after two rounds. Go ahead, you can smile. It's got to feel pretty good. You're 17 years old. You were pretty close to going to the Olympics. I'll see you next week here in Cleveland. All those fans that from your area, are they going to come up there? Yeah, they go support me more. But it's going to be more of my family up there to support me so I can put on a better show. It was a pretty good show you put on tonight. You had almost a shutout there, and gosh, uh, you outdistanced them after two rounds. That's right. You yeah, feel good? You feel good tonight? Yeah, I feel real good. I'm, I'm, I feel so good. I don't really know what to say. So. You know what you can say? We're just glad you you made it. And, Thank you for coming down here to sit with us. Yeah, Rishi, congratulations. You got a golden smile, and uh, maybe in a couple months, you can add to your golden collection, right? Right. <laughs> All right. Thanks. Rishi Warren, we'll see him in Cleveland in a week from now. Meanwhile, round three here, Siler and Davis. Davis is trying to make a comeback. I'll tell you what, Siler just keeps adding up points. Yep. Seems to be very sharp on his punches. Scotty, what do you think they said to uh, Davis in the corner? I mean, you're down, what, 12 points? Yeah, he, and he's getting further down. He's got he's to get going, get busier. But, you know, some nights it's just not your night. And maybe tonight is Silas' night, and that's just the way it's going to be. One punch can change it all. You know that. Oh, yeah. And Silas has not been known for being stopped. He's always in great shape. Conditioning really helps when you're, when you're in a fight because that stops you from getting knocked out if you're in good shape. Well, he is just continuing. He, he has got Davis measured up. Measured up, and he's scoring. He, it's just his styles make fights. And right now, Davis doesn't have him figured out. A little more experience. Silas, you have to say, he's got a lot more experience. He's been around for a while. Yeah, he's, he's, six, he's six years old. Right. And I've, I've seen Silas in international competition. So Davis can't see, be feeling bad about this fight because he's in there with a real good fighter. And we need to point out, too, it is a double elimination tournament. So for Davis, doesn't look too good here with about a half a minute left in round number three. He's going to get another shot. And if he then wins the challenger bracket, he could face off Siler again next week in Cleveland. That's the good news. The bad news is he's going to have to make some major adjustments in a week's time if he gets there. That's right. Exactly. You know, but like I say, every fighter has a good day and a bad day. And if it's not your night, you're in trouble. But the great fighters find a way to win. That's what he always said about Ali. It wasn't his night all the time, but he always found a way to win. Well, the bell actually sounded there. The clock may have been just a few seconds off. This may be it here for the 112-pound flyweight class between Siler and Davis. I, I don't know if the ref is going to let it go on or not. It is 30 to 10. That is the official score. Ronnie Siler piling up the points. As we take a look back at that last round. All right. Watch Siler He's doing some good shots in there. His eye is on the target. He just keeps coming back and firing shots. The one thing that he wasn't able to do, and Davis was to come back and fire. Well, that's it. Referee has called it 30 to 10. So that stops it here. Referee stops the contest outscored at 146 of the third round for the winner, Ron Siler.
Ronnie Seiler moving on. 30 to 10 in the 112 pound weight class. We'll see him in Cleveland. Still fighting for that Olympic dream. Roberto Benitez of New York takes on Torrance Daniels of Fort Carson, Colorado next in the 119 pound class. Got that conk? Uh, sure. Thanks, man. Oh, that's good stuff. Ain't it? <laughs> Let's do this! Track and field and throwing in general is one of the few sports where it's all on you. By taking shortcuts, you're gonna build an inadequacy in yourself and a feeling that you cheated yourself. And Sports are there to build your confidence and to make you feel good about yourself and make you feel proud of what you can do. And any type of shortcut that you're taking, that's, that's only cheating you out of exactly what you're doing sports for. The charge of the organization, the ABCA, is to help promote volleyball at all levels. Volleyball is a sport that grows like by groundswell and you need someone to organize it for the volleyball world the ABCA has been the guiding light. We have an opportunity by joining the ABCA to become better volleyball coaches. I think it's our responsibility to work hard to become better and we have an avenue to do so by the ABCA. The attention that's drawn to our sport um, has been drawn to us through the ABCA. The names may change. That's in. Another race. But the game remains the same. He pounds it off the block. Serving up all the power. That's in. Athleticism and teamwork that is CSTV Spikes. Huge block on the outside. Follow all the action as the country's top teams chart a course for Hawaii and a shot at the national championship. BYU versus Hawaii. Thursday the 25th at 8.30. Log on to CSTV.com for more details. Now ready for 119 pounds, and Roberto Benitez and Torrance Daniel. From Fort Carson, Colorado. And in the red corner Torrance will be Benitez, 23-year-old, five foot seven from Brooklyn, New York. Now lives in Marquette, Michigan, going to school there, Northern Your Michigan judges. University. In the blue corner is Daniels, out of Fort Carson, Colorado, 29-year-old, five foot seven, so height is just about even for these guys. Scotty experience at a premium certainly in this bout with the 29 year old and the 23 year old. No teenagers present. Well, I'll tell you what though. Benitez has got so much talent and experience. He's had a lot of tournaments. You know, that age difference is not going to make a difference in this fight. Benitez is to me one of the better fighters in the tournament. He has a lot of talent, great speed, good work ethic. Look at, looking at another rematch, too, here, Scotty. These two fought at the uh, U.S. Championships this year in the semis with the 1918 decision going to Benitez. So hopefully we'll see another close one. It'll be very close. You watch Benitez, that, that southpaw style, as you come in, he le leads with that lead right hook. You come in, you got to get that left hand up and stay behind that jab. If you don't stay behind that jab, you're in trouble. Lawrence Davis got to keep that jab going and work around it with that lead right hand. Get in the outside with that lead right foot. Instead, Roberto Benitez right now has got the feet in the position where he wants them. So you'd rather see Daniels keep moving left, keep moving left. Got to move left. You got to keep going to the left. Otherwise, that's Benitez will be able to be having right down the chute. Benitez is a very sharp fighter, very experienced. Torrance Daniels has got to get, maybe landed a nice right hand, but he got caught with one too. Nice right from Benitez. This fight's very, these guys are very frugal with their punches. Yeah, and they're getting, and so the judges be pretty frugal with the score. And you see a lot of these shots connect, and a nice one from Benitez there, but all those shots to the body that hit the arm, it's just not going to register. No, it's not. Benitez has got to get more active in the next round to get more aggressive. 
And so it's a low scoring first round here at 119 Bantam weight. It's uh, three to two for Daniels. And with us now is Ron Seiler, winner in 112 pound class. And Ronnie Scoot up here, congratulations. You got another win against Mark Davis. You've got this guy's number, but uh, let's talk about that first round. It was pretty tough. First round, it was tough. He came, I guess he was watching the youngster from Cincinnati, Ohio, for my team. Came out strong against the, against the veteran, 106, ranked number one. And he chatted on me, but I felt like my defense was tighter. And I kind of expected that after I seen Rashid fight. So I was kind of prepared for it. But we, had a, we had a nice first round. It was tough. But then I think that my experience really kicked in a, in the second and third round. Do you think experience is the key for everybody in this game? I think it is. But what do you think about it? I mean, experience can be a good help, a, a, a big help, but you also got to be, and you got to have the top, have the best preparation and talent, you know, but experience, I think experience could help out a lot. Well, thank you for coming down. We look forward to seeing you next week. Yes, sir. Yeah, Ronnie, congratulations. You got a big crowd there in Cleveland? Yes, sir. All right. Half my family going to be there. All right, good luck. Thank you. Benitez and Daniels, round number two. It's three to two. For Daniels on the computer scorecards. Both fighters very cautious, very you know, thrifty with their punches. And it's going to make this, like a lot of scores we've seen earlier, we've had 30 points scored and 24. Not these guys. It's three to two in second round. It's a chess game here. Are we going to see Benitez switch from Southpaw? We've seen that a couple of times so far at the tournament, guys smoothly switching back and forth they some of them do it so smoothly you don't even know they've, they've done it and uh, that's really a, a key uh, they not not being able to show that you're doing it. a lot of guys can adjust if they know you're switching over but some guys do it midstream so Benitez does not switch around too much he's a southpaw and he likes fighting southpaw and it's very difficult for a lot of people especially with his quickness very quick fight. the key to these two guys is that when they're fighting uh, each other, when they're, their feet seem to get tangled up, one could step on the other one because they're both vying, trying to get outside the other one's lead foot. This is really a chess game here. Well, who can cat and mouse? Who can help cat the mouse? I don't know how they're just doing it. Here. Nice exchange. Benitez getting the better of that, and he continues it. Yeah, he threw enough punches there that when the other guy tried to get out of it, he got nailed. Daniels is good. When a guy starts throwing those punches, gotta let him go. Yep. He can't just stand there and try and block him and then duck. Then he drops his hands, he got hit again. Yeah, solid round for Benitez here, round number two. I've got eight to four here on the judge's computer scorecard. Let's listen in to Benitez's corner. Okay. Right, it's close. You understand Al what I'm saying? Coach, you his coach like for quite a while. Right straight. Bang, 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 bang. Right there at his club, right there. Gym, last uh, shot, make it hard. Then don't pull out. Drop down. You, you, you've known him for years, right? Al Mitchell. Take another look here. Round number two. Watch these punches. Bam. Left hand landing. You always got to finish up the combination. You gotta be the last guy punching. You can't stop and pull back. You're gonna have to do it. So that was uh, six to one in round number two for Benitez over Daniels. And so the total there, they're looking at an eight to four after two rounds. Heads up by the referee, a little water bottle still on the canvas. Scotty, I gotta imagine that Daniels is gonna come out got to get his hands more active. Well, he surely does, and he can't play this cat and mouse game right now with a four-point edge. In this kind of a fight, four points is like a week. It's just unbelievable how the spread. Benita just really scored some, a lot of points in that last round to catch up. Both fighters very quick on their feet, both very active. Benitez cannot get cautious. Benitez has got to let his hands go, and that's what he's doing in there. He knows he's veteran enough that he's got to keep punching, keep scoring. Can't go into his shell. Daniel's trying to zero in too much for that, that, that killer shot. 
Yeah, I, he, right now he's loading up punches and can't load up in these in these situations. You gotta start scoring, getting that jab going, little punches, fire, and then when the punches start landing, then you can put a little more power on. You were joking earlier today about guys throwing punches that couldn't break an egg, but <laughs> here here in the amateurs, you know that that's gonna score points. You just gotta get the connection, right? Yes, it is. You gotta score, and you gotta score in the white part of that glove, and three judges got to see it at the right. same time. Benitez pulling a little bit of a gap right now. Benitez, Scotty, to me, seems like he's catching Daniels every time he comes in. He's either getting them with one or two. Daniels seems to be throwing too big a punch. too much power in him at this point. He needs to start landing shots in the body to find the range and then go upstairs. When you're not hitting that head, you got to do some things with that, with the, those punches so you get the range. You can find the guy. He's not finding him at all. Lead right up there by Davis. Very nice. So round three, another good one for Roberto Benitez in the red quarter. Daniels with one round left. He's got his work cut out for him, and let's hear what they're gonna tell him. A little bit more pressure, D. We can, we can win this. A little bit more pressure, okay? We still down four. Okay. You got it. You got to step to him. Okay, step to him, D, and punch with both hands. Okay, but we'll get there behind the jab. All right? Okay, he got to come to you, so five. Okay? All right? 12 to 8. Official the score here after three rounds. Mitchell's got the point, right? Man just got to come to him. He's got to come to him, and that, that to me is a great fight for Benitez. He's a counter puncher, loves to use his quickness, loves to have you come to him so he can score. When you're coming in, you're easier to hurt. And Scott, you know the thing I love so far tonight, we've seen guys with a big lead, and then that next round, they're not tentative or conservative at all. No, they can't be. You gotta go, everything's gotta be out of the gas tank when the fight's over. You don't wanna leave nothing in the tank, just let them go. Benitez cannot sit on his horse. He's gotta get where there he is. Throwing that left straight left hand down the chute. This is the point where Daniels might take a, an ill-advised gamble and Benitez could just catch him and end it with one shot. It's not a good thought that he might get stopped with one punch. It's, it's not going to happen because Benitez, one, is not a big enough puncher. And he's just, he, these guys are both in great shape. And that's really the key. Dan, Daniels is really in good condition. So it's going to take a lot more than what Benitez has to knock him out. But Daniels might get careless in there and try and throw some wild punch because he's running out of time like right now yeah. he doesn't want to be tied up he wants to be fighting yeah you got under a minute left and you got the head gear and you got the 10 ounce gloves too so you're right. probably gonna, not gonna see a knockout today right. Benitez is stretching the lead out a little bit right now because Daniels has got to get careless and, and try and get to him run out of time Benitez fighting an excellent fight tonight, especially that second round he pulled ahead. Wild uppercut from Daniels missed. Down to 20 seconds. Well, he's just swinging for the fences now. Benitez just staying with him. Not a bad thing to do. You know you've got the lead, you're out in front, just to keep your eye on the target and your eye on the prize. Benitez uses those little feints. I love that. Never let a guy get a good shot at you. You're using feints. There's the bell. And so Torrance Daniels had himself a fairly good fourth round here, but it is uh, Roberto Benitez solid throughout. And he is going to win this one on points. And so he has uh, beaten Torrance Daniels one more time. But as uh, we've already said, Double elimination tournament. Daniels' chances are running out, but they're not over with. Not over with. We have a decision on points. The winner in the red corner, Roberto Benitez. 19-12, Roberto Benitez from New York City moving on to the box office in Cleveland.
The featherweights are next as Mickey Bay takes on Ray Lampkin next in the 125 pound class. A kid, right? I, I want to launch a protest. Well, look, it's it's two inches higher. Look at those hand grips. It's not regulation. Regulation? Look, you know what else? I, I want a urine sample from this kid.